Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. And joining us in this segment to talk about cardiovascular health issues in Australia and around the world is Dr. Jason Kaplan. And he's joining us to uh, talk about some evidence-based therapies, a little bit about that, and also about supporting heart health. Welcome to the program, Dr. Kaplan. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much for having me on. Uh, World Heart Health Day 2019. Uh, yesterday, how was it? Um, how was it addressed in Australia? There was a large campaign about raising awareness about heart health, and as you know, in, in many countries, and especially in first world countries, cardiovascular disease, and that encompasses heart disease and stroke, accounts for you know many millions of people being affected every year by the disease. And sadly, some people have a significant event that either causes a loss of life or significant or significant disability. So World Heart Health Day is about raising awareness about your know, heart health in our community and has encouraged people to become heart heroes and champion for, for cardiovascular disease. And what is what we're finding out more and more is that simple lifestyle factors actually play the majority make the majority of benefits in taking care of people's hearts. But the really important thing about these lifestyle changes they need to be done as early as possible in people's lifespan. And I always tell patients that some, there are a couple of key things that we that we have to get in get in place, and these include you know, diet, exercise, uh, managing our stress, sleep, you know, and um, ensuring adequate nutrition as well. Which would you say would be the the most important, yet the um, I guess easiest to uh, to take on in a lifestyle that doesn't incorporate great nutrition, but trying to do so. For me, no, some of my patients that exercise is, is, is vital in terms of, you know, cardiovascular long, longevity and health. And if exercise, if we could bottle up the effects of exercise, in a drug would become the world's biggest it would become the world's biggest selling drug so cardiovascular overall cardiovascular fitness is very very important in maintaining someone's cardiovascular health and time and time again we're seeing in large clinical studies that the overall fitter you are fitter aerobically you are the longer you're going to live and that is despite the despite the presence of cardiovascular disease Even if you if you have heart disease the best thing you can do for your heart is get out there walk do, do exercise you're under supervision first initially and then once you've been once it's under supervision you just get out there doing it as, as often as you can the other you know major factor the, the two things we can modify is, is our diet and, and lifestyle and when we know that diet plays such an important part in in, in cardiovascular in cardiovascular health and as some of your listeners may be aware there's a, there's a worldwide move to move to a more plant-based diet mm-hmm. and We've, we've seen in large scale clinical trials that a plant based Mediterranean style diet has been one of the best diets to prevent and even reverse heart disease. Are you saying that um, that plant based diet, as early in life as we can start that diet, is the best? Or is it something that can be um, undertaken, say, in your 30s if you haven't had such a diet previously? It, it can be t- undertaken in your 30s. We know the origins of. The disease, heart disease, is caused by a process in the arteries called atherosclerosis, and we know that we know that atherosclerosis starts fairly early on, sometimes in our twenties. And so, starting a diet would be an ideal time. When it comes to to heart health, obviously, starting a great diet and and exercise as early as possible, as you say, is key. But um, when it comes to trying to reverse some of the effects that um, a, a not so healthy lifestyle has caused, what can we do? We I mentioned uh, ubiquinol uh, as the active form of uh, a powerful antioxidant, uh, CoQ10. How is that something that can help us um, if we're trying to get healthier? There are a couple of, you know, the, you asked a great question because I often get asked that, that often how can we reverse heart disease that is, that is already there? And we talked about with diet and exercise, but sometimes due to, you know, either poor nutrition or busy lifestyles, people may not, may not have the, the ability to do all of those. And so ubiquinol is, which is the active form of, of CoQ10 in our, in our bodies can provide, can provide, you know, support to people already taking certain heart medications and as you mentioned it is it is an antioxidant there may be some some effect at uh 
there may be some effect at lowering LDL, so lowering lowering bad bad cholesterol and supporting our supporting our cardiovascular system. And what's really interesting there's a large part study published in one of the large um, heart journals and people with weaker hearts, so it's people with disease of the heart muscle, ubiquinol may may help in actually strengthening that heart muscle and leading to to better symptoms. So it's a very it's one of the, the, the few supplements that I do recommend recommend to to people in taking care in taking care of their, their their arts. You know, I, I'm a big believer that most of the our nutrition and um, should come from our diet and the foods that we eat. But there are some some supplements that proven to be very helpful in heart health. Are there any small differences, say, in Australia and the United States or maybe the United Kingdom as far as some of the issues are concerned? Are there subtle differences? One of the things that we are look, starting to see you know, more is compared to, say, the United States and Australia, United Kingdom, we're starting to see an increase, you know, people are increasing their their body mass and their weight. And so obesity is becoming, you know, is is becoming a major issue. And, you know, now in Australia, I guess as more, you know, as more fast foods and, and takeaways and all these all these these large outlets become available, so they're very nutrition poor food and nutrition. We're starting to see a move towards the people just having increased increased weight, um, and then increased weight causes problems such as the metabolic syndrome and leads leads to the early onset of type two diabetes, which is an, which is another risk factor for the development of for the development of, of heart disease. Um, what is really interesting is you start in, in Australia. We're starting to see cultures such as um, some, some of the islander cultures from around Australia, where they, they where they haven't traditionally been affected by heart disease, mm-hmm. start to move to a more Western diet, and then subsequently develop heart disease because of the change in their change in their dietary patterns from traditional foods. So I guess part of the awareness, um, at least in in the Australian community there would be uh, kind of sticking to more traditional as opposed to going more Western, as you say, with the fast food and the more processed foods, yeah? Absolutely. You know, the worst, you know, processed, processed food and processed carbohydrate, processed carbohydrates has been one of the major factors about the development of the metabolic syndrome and obesity. We see in our clinic every day people that are overweight, when you're overweight, you don't exercise, often make poor, you're dead because of poor, poor, poor food, poor food choices. One of the other really interesting things are people always say, you know, well, I've got a bad family, I've got a bad family history. How can I change, you know, what, what can I do to, you know, to change that? And there was a wonderful study published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2016 that showed that even if you have poor underlying genetics, if you could get the simple things right, such as having a healthy cholesterol, a healthy weight, a normal blood pressure, are close to 120 systolic over over 80 diastolic. The absence of type two, the absence of type two diabetes, a healthy diet, and regular exercise. If you get those six things right, you can reduce your underlying genetic risk by over 50 percent, yeah. which is pretty powerful. Where can our listeners get some more information about um, heart health issues in Australia and um, World Heart Health Day, as uh, you know, as it comes around next year as well? So, for in Australia, there's the um, the Heart Foundation has a website, and there's one there's great there's great resources there for people that are interested in learning more about their hearts. Um, there is a website about World Heart Health Day, which also has a lot of downloadable 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 resources. The one thing that I always tell uh, you know tell my patients is we've got to become we can't just there's lots of information out there on the internet, and, and you know we need to get the information from reliable sources. Um, and so if you are looking for information about, you know, heart health, the best, the best approaches to heart health, I think it's very worthwhile using it from reputable sources from, you know, often, you know, websites such as large healthcare systems in America, such as the Mayo Clinic or the Cleveland Clinic have wonderful resources available about how, about, about heart health as well. Dr. Kaplan, thank you for joining us on the Health Professional Radio today. Thank you very much for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio with Dr. Jason Kaplan. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.